What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, formerly Angry Centaur Gaming, and today I bring to you the review for Trackmania Turbo, the newest in the line of the Trackmania titles. Games that eschew countless car customizations for a game world that's a melding of skate park trick competitions and Donald Trump's idea of third world negotiations by just putting up walls everywhere and then laughing when you can't get past them. The Trackmania titles have always been the love child of Travis Pastrana during his jumping motorbikes into mountains phases and Cole Trickle from the Tom Cruise movie Days of Thunder. Let's see how Turbo does, shall we? It's the first jump onto the consoles, so we're going to see how it performs there. Let's do this. As always, if you like the review, eh, maybe subscribe or don't. It's a free country. So here's the review for Trackmania Turbo. Russian dash cam living, finish lines that just jet you off into the void, and gravity that's pretty much just a suggestion. Graphics are up first. You know, the game straight up just doesn't care what you're doing as long as you look cool doing it. You could be flipping upside down while sliding across an inverted half pipe and then twisting into an all points landing or just cranking through an alligator's backyard in the swamps or maybe even tearing breakneck across futuristic cityscapes. The game's crisp but clean visuals offers an almost unmodified look to racing without all the post-processing effects other titles throw at you. For the most part, the game runs at an absolutely rock solid 60 frames per second and that's good too because of the kinds of reactions you need in the later tracks are those made by the evil minds of longtime Mania fans, requiring Jack Burton Cracker Jack timing. Luckily, the graphics are just absolutely insane with an excellent lighting engine that does an incredible job regardless of the anarchy on the screen. I love how each location also looks so vastly different with the cascading neon canopy lights of the futuristic tracks to the backwater bogs of the swamp areas. The game may revisit them a number of times, but smart use of the landscape and track design means that each location still does its best to reflect excellent regardless. Regardless. Now, car designs are overly basic, and the game's really never been about vehicular variations when it comes to customization. However, there are a high number of painting customizations that you can perform at any time. Trackmania has never really been about that individual coolness, and that continues here. Besides, it's one thing to look cool doing a double backflip in a vehicle fresh off the Mad Max movie lot, but it's a whole other thing to have your gamer tag lit up on the leaderboards when you get gold. I'd say as a package, while not overflowing with graphical complexities, what Trackmania sets out to do, it does with a really Really good solid frame rate and a great look throughout. Sound, music, and voice. You know, I loved it, seriously. There aren't that many cars, so it's not like they needed to go Forza crazy and sample like 200 vehicles. It's a couple cars and some heavy mixing as well as a bevy of processing effects when those are needed. I've always felt that Trackmania skewed on the high end of the audio spectrum, regardless of the vehicle, and I feel Turbo does the same. It's a particular sonic umbrella that they're shooting for with a little bit more of a high-end turbo sound and a little less of that ground-heavy horsepower kind of feel. Hey, in the end, some people like to feel the horsepower and some people like to hear it. Music. Okay, so this is really hit and miss. I enjoyed the music, but despite a number of tracks, it can grow samey very fast, especially because some tracks you might spend an incredible amount of time listening to while you're dying and restarting and dying again like some kind of Groundhog Day starring Jeff Gordon. Overall, it's techno with some subtle layering of synth and percussion to allow for easy fading in and out when the game is trying to inform you by barely playing music that you are sucking as if you needed some kind of help. For me, I would have liked maybe double the songs. After even 12 hours, I was completely completely numb to whatever was playing. It's nice to be able to pick and choose and have the game dynamically mix the tracks. I just feel that there should have been a lot more of them. Voice. Other than a couple different people counting down, three, two, one, there's not much. Let's move on. Gameplay. You know, it's best to remember that this is a game that straight up embraces crazy. Any title that starts a race with a car drop from a helicopter is either the beginning to a Fast and Furious movie or a Trackmania game. That's just a given. And as someone who's played every title from its inception, I can tell you that this atmosphere is one of the reasons I so adore the titles. They've really always felt like a callback to the almost instinctual reactions required in the famed Road Rash series, where at full speed and in reward for doing well, the machine barely touches the ground. And if it does, it's just sort of for an instant, like it's rubbing it in that gravity has 
no real power there. And of course that, plus incredible guts and some serious manual dexterity, are needed and rewarded. And the only reason I bring that up is because Trackmania is at times nut crushingly hard. And I don't say that to intimidate, because even if you're not that good, you can still play the game for hours upon hours. But the Trackmania games have always been deceptively brutal, offering this trapeze act of high flying car stunts with a fine sheen of graphical polish. But then deep down at its core, it's straight up brutal Dark Souls style of car action, where one mistake almost anywhere on the track can indeed require a restart, especially once you have beat it the first time. So let's Let's start out with the modes a little bit. In single player, you have a very small subset of vehicles that you can jump into, and in campaign mode, you take on 200 tracks trying to get bronze, silver, or gold with each type of metal, unlocking tracks, paint jobs, icons, and random other crap in the game. Unlocking each metal requires a unique ramp up of skills that for many will bring up memories of the Trials series of motorbike ragdoll death games, depending on which set of tracks you're on. The 100 or so middle and lower tracks that require bronze medals to unlock should be attainable without wanting to punch someone in their face more than a couple times. Not because you're mad, but because your perfect four-timed power slides into a massive death-defying jump went bad within 13 inches of the finish line. And resetting even to a checkpoint should just be called the you ain't getting shit back button. Only a scant handful of times have I reset at a checkpoint and got a bronze, which is pretty attainable just by staying on the track usually. Now, moving on, you have the silver medals. This requires staying on the track and actually understanding a bit of the underlying design of whichever track you're on to cut off some of the seconds from your bronze time. Then there's the gold, the top of the heap, and also the place you find out that the top really means nothing, because just because you got a gold doesn't really mean someone online hasn't beat your time, but I'll get to that in a second. Now, depending on the track and your particular skills, gold is, as I said, attainable with some training or as your knowledge of the track increases and grows. Make no mistake, the game is both incredibly easy to enjoy and yet also insufferable to master, which means I loved it. I love that part of the gameplay. As I've stated, I love games that are freakishly tough, and Trackmania has that attribute if you let it. Sure, you can get bronze and unlock some tracks, but sooner rather than later, you're going to start needing the later medals to unlock some tracks, and that's when Novice is separated from Expert here. Also, I would advise you now to steer well clear of any steering wheels for the title, as this was originally made for keyboard and can be controlled, of course, much easier even just using the digital pad on a console or PC controller than anything analog. And that's the way the game has always been. It's this callback to last, 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 last gen's control schemes that's actually so delightfully difficult at times. It really feels like nothing else out there. Now, while campaign mode is absolutely the meat of the game, with basically you taking down official times across 200 tracks, you can also play a special mode called Double Driver, which is, as it sounds, two people steering one car, requiring an incredible degree of teamwork. Admittedly, to me, it just fell flat. Now, there's a massive number of other modes as well, including local multiplayer, not just create your own tracks and share them or jump into live rooms and race others in the online, but all kinds of just local multiplayer like hot seat, arcade and four player split screen. Some video game programmer out there realized that not everyone has a John Holmes sized fat pipe to the Internet and maybe just maybe some people want to play locally. And there are even some secret codes you can enter to unlock special race types like this really awesome gameplay experience called Mono Screen, where everyone shares the same screen and you lose if you get pushed out of the camera view. Now, when it comes to online modes, there is a room browser where you can create or join other people's games and jump in and either race against their times or if everyone's set up right, you can start races at the same time. Sadly, the game doesn't really have dedicated player servers for the PC version, meaning whatever races you create and challenges you post will be in rooms just like the console version, served by the developer's systems and not your own. Now, this isn't an expectation on consoles, but for PC owners, it's a painful omission as private servers were one of the highlights of past titles and is something than that most PC owners expect. Also, let's cover the tracks themselves just for a second. It's one thing to understand that Trackmania plays loose with gravity, it's another thing to ride for 500 yards upside down on a magnetic track, only to seemingly be thrust into the void because you missed a small notice that you should have taken a hairpin turn instead of flying off into the fucking unknown. The game's mix of loops, half loops, rail slides, half pipes, and verticality means that any track, even ones in the same location of which there are four, can throw you for a tailspin. As someone who's a fan of racing games like Project Cars and Forza and Drive Club, the plain and simple fact is this game might end up requiring 
more concentration than those just due to the sheer speed and the requirements of the driver. Now, lastly, they have a very robust track creator that can be used in basic, normal, advanced, and random modes. Basic is setting up a track with almost no elevation and is more of a track making tutorial. Then normal allows for most pieces of the tracks and can be used to put far more detail down and be presented by the creator. Then you have advanced, which for all intents and purposes is pretty much what the devs use and is what the huge community that supported this game in the past on the PC has used as well, with all manner of options and track choices in place. Lastly, you have a random mode, which is just basically picking a time of day and the length of the race, and the game randomly creates a track which has the same stellar percentage chance of being awesome, like a player-made one. You can post these to challenge rooms, alert friends that you've done so, test them yourselves, and race against both your prior times, as well as newcomers who are going to challenge your standing. <laughs> if the game has anything, it's got a lot of things. Fun factor. You know, a racing game needs three things to be great, I personally believe. Good control, enjoyable tracks, and a reason to return. That's the whole damn reason you're racing usually, which is some kind of competition. With yourself, with others, or with a computer. Trackmania is a blast, and its car control and the interaction with the environment is spot on for what it's offering. Remember, this isn't Forza or Drive Club. It's its own beast with an incredibly unique control scheme that has to be gotten used to. It also has enjoyable tracks, and while some are pure burners, which means I never ever wanted to see them again, in the end, for the most part, they ran from good to excellent, with a bevy already being created by the most insidious past players' craniums known to Trackmania. And the reason to return here, for me, is simple. Medals unlock a larger number of items, and you're always being reminded you're slower than the game, or your own score, or someone else's. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. As a full-fledged racer, with a ton to offer, this is an easy buy. And though it's missing the PC personal servers, which is a large issue, us folks who like to use them with that content there are gonna notice it's missing because it was really robust. In the end though, it's just a really fun game, and I enjoy the control and the way it feels when I'm playing. Seriously, within 20 minutes of playing this, you're gonna realize in many ways, it's a bit like Trials Fusion, a bit like Dark Souls for Cars, and a little bit like a random bad idea generator in game form because some trusty of modern chemicals put the damn reset button as the B button, which happens to be like putting explosives next to a fucking kitchen fork. But in the end, regardless of all that, I absolutely had a blast. So as always, if you guys like the video, hit thumbs up. If you dislike the video, hit thumbs down. Peace out.